Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 12 of Crystalline Solids of the Tro textbook. This is Dr. Rhonda Cofield. This is part two in the final part of this discussion. We're just doing kind of an overview of the crystal structures and how you classify those. So I don't know about you, but I really like flow charts, um, but I'm a visual learner, so that's probably why. But um, crystalline solids are basically defined by what type of particles there are in them. Okay, and so then you can subclassify them based on their attractive forces that are between. So you overall you have crystalline solids, and then you can have the three major types, molecular solids, ionic solids, and atomic solids. All right, and then you can further take those down into different types. The ionic solids basically are just ionic solids. They're composed of ions, cations, and anions. They have super high melting points, okay? Molecular solids, they are units of molecules, and they usually have low melting points, okay, like ice. Um, Atomic solids, however, can you can kind of look at them because they can have different types of intermolecular forces. Um, and so you can have a non-bonding type, you can have a metallic type, and then you can have network covalent. Network covalent, as the name implies, are put together by covalent bonds. Um, metallic Crystallines are put together by metallic bonds, that is bonds between two metals, which we haven't really talked about a lot in this course. And then non-bonding um, atomic solids are held together by dispersion forces. And so um, that's just one little other layer of how they, and these are the cool ones, right? These are the ones that you can see all these really crazy um formations and things like that like quartz and amethyst and all those other cool things so but our primary ones are these top three uh, molecular ionic or atomic and you should be able to figure those out pretty easily because mo molecules make up molecular solids ions make up ionic solids and then atoms that is just a single atom of something is going to be making up the atomic solids. And then I gave you the subcategories um, of those, depending on what they are and what they're held together by. So mo molecular solids, um, things like carbon dioxide, glucose, um, other things, they are going to be held together by dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, or hydrogen bonding, depending on if they're polar or not. Um, because they have weak attractive forces, they have low melting points because it doesn't take a lot of energy to melt them. So they're going to be less than 300 C. Now that might sound like a high number to you, but remember we're talking about solids, okay? And so these solids are going to be held together very, very strongly, but overall molecular solids are going to be held together with the weakest. Um, in ionic solids, as I said, this is like sodium chloride salts. Um, every cation and, and anion attract each other from different directions, and so that's what gives them their um, strength. Metallic atomic solids, which we haven't seen a lot in here, are held together by metallic bonds. And metallic bonds um, are based on coulombs of attraction and they are the tightest packed of the lattices and they're all cations okay so they're they're held together by coulombic or, or electronic uh, attractions because there are no negative charges in these because they're all cations because all metals are cations if you recall so for you how do you classify the crystalline solids um, molecular, ionic, or atomic. All you do is you ask yourself, okay, that is gold, okay? And gold is not a molecule, not an ion. It is an atom, therefore it is an atomic solid. CH3, CH2OH, methanol, um, no, sorry, ethanol, um, molecule, ion, atom. 
Well, they aren't ions, they're molecules, okay? So it's gonna be molecular solid. And then finally, CAF2, that has a metal and a nonmetal. And our previous knowledge tells us that, that isn't, those are ions, plus and minus. So that gives us an ionic solid. Okay, so simple as that. So that's what you have to do as far as classifying. The rest of, of chapter 12 is just knowing definitions and, and uh, being able to apply definitions to things, okay? And that's it for crystalline solids.